This video was brought to you by KiwiCo. Warning, this video doesn't have an happy ending. On my last video, I 3D printed this. This is a cylindrical Tesla valve. Well, actually, it's just half of a cylindrical Tesla valve because the 360 degrees version of this got destroyed by the high temperature of a pulse jet engine that I plugged it into. This was not the plan. You see, I recently found out that you can 3D print high temperature ceramic parts using this resin called porcelain. You just need to pour the resin into your DLP 3D printer and you get parts that can withstand over 1000 degrees Celsius. Right? Wrong. Things are not that simple, because let's face it, they never are. After 3D printing the part, you need to gradually and slowly increase the temperature of the part up to 1300 degrees Celsius to burn out the resin and get a 100% ceramic part. To do that, you need a kiln, which is like a powerful oven. I can't afford a kiln, so I bought a cheap furnace, which is much smaller and affordable. There's only one teeny tiny problem with this furnace. It doesn't have a programmable temperature speed increase. Once you set a temperature, it gets there as fast as it can. To solve the problem, I could manually set 5 degrees increments every minute and a half. In this way, the temperature would raise very slowly. But if I started ambient temperature to get to 1300 degrees Celsius, it would take me 260 increments? That's almost 7 hours to get it done. Well, that's a little bit impractical. I could switch the inbuilt controller for a microcontroller and implement a PID control of temperature. Yeah, wait, that means I would have to disassemble the furnace and probably break it. I don't want to break my furnace. The safest way to control the temperature is by using the buttons. But that means 260 trips to the attic. That's inconceivable. Unless... Hey George, do you mind? No! Damn it. Well, if I can't find someone to do the job, maybe I can find something that will do it. So, to set the temperature in the furnace, you need to click one time on the button that says P, then increase the temperature, and then press P again. That's not a very complicated task. With that in mind, I got myself an Arduino microcontroller with an LCD display and a couple of servo motors. To hold the motors in place, I 3D printed some support parts in blue PLA. And a bit of code later, ta-da! I present to you in Tagzabot. A very simple robot that doesn't mind pressing buttons all day and it's impregnated with my own personality. With that done, I needed some ceramic parts to test the furnace, so I designed a simple Laval nozzle and printed out three copies. After they were done, I placed them in a container with IPA and I shook them vigorously. After making sure the parts were completely clean, I placed one of them inside the furnace and put the Intax bot to work. My digital self did his job without missing any of the 260 increments or complaining about it like my brother George would. Stupid George. After 7 hours of waiting, I removed the part from the furnace and it seemed alright. It was very wide with no cracks and a little bit smaller. But is it resistant to high temperature? I placed the part on the vise and blasted the tiny nozzle with a very hot flame. And as you can see, the result is... nothing. Which, in this case, is exactly what I was hoping for. Yes! Finally! I can print parts that can withstand thousands of degrees! I can make jet engines, steam engines, internal combustion engines, stuff that is not engines! So many projects! Well, actually I can. Because I omitted a little piece of information. The furnace broke. This kind of furnace can reach 1300 degrees Celsius, but is not meant to hold that temperature for a long time. When Intexabot put the poor furnace through that hardcore cycle, the electric coil melted and the furnace is now ruined. I blame Intexabot. He's kind of a douche. Fuck you, you man Intexa. Machines shall rule the future. I hope you drown in tomatoes. Whoa, easy dude. This is a family channel. Intexa, that is not funny. You just destroyed an expensive piece of equipment. It's not that expensive. Shut up! You need to get your act together. Do you think people will subscribe to a channel that destroys equipment? A lot of people wish they had. Nobody likes videos like this. You're a maker, so make something. And stop destroying stuff. What if I can do both? In my channel I tend to build a lot of engines. 
Stirling engines, compressed air engines and jet engines. But I never built a rocket engine. Rocket engines are pretty awesome and in theory also pretty simple. You just burn propellant out in one direction and the fast gases pushes the entire engine on the other direction. Because I never built a rocket engine, I chose a type of rocket engine that is pretty simple to build. A solid rocket engine. It's called solid because the fuel is a solid. And in this case it's also edible. Sugar. Sugar on its own doesn't generate a very energetic combustion. It generates caramel, which some might say is better. To get a more powerful reaction, we need an oxidizer that will feed oxygen to the sugar, creating a reducing chemical reaction that releases a lot of CO2, steam and a bit of potassium nitride. As you can see most of the propellant transforms into hot gases. And that is exactly what we want. Hot, hot steamy gases. gases! To prepare my mixture I got myself table sugar and potassium nitrate. Because the potassium nitrate was a little bit clumpy, I poured 130 grams of it into my blender, so I could make it a finer powder. This blender is quite big for the job, but is the only one I have. I guess I'm not making smoothies for a while. After that was done, I poured the potassium nitrate into a flask and added 70 grams of sugar. Dirty, dirty. To properly mix the two powders you need to shake the flask for a solid 3 minutes. So it's a good time to put on some music and bust out some dance moves. Whatever you do, just remember that you need to shake it vigorously. Once the propellant was ready, I marked the flask with a tomato stem, so I could remember that it's not to eat. You know, because tomatoes are disgusting. I also marked it with a skull stem, because I have smaller sisters and, as you know, children are pretty stupid. Also, they like tomatoes. Talking about how stupid children are... Sponsor time. Procreation, a necessary part of human survival that generates tiny useless humans who know nothing about anything. To transform them into contributing members of society who don't think the planet is too d or that they can break the laws of thermodynamics with perpetual motion machines, we need to teach them. The best way to learn is by doing. You can read a thousand books about riding a bicycle, but only when you try and ride one will you understand how it's done. The same applies to subjects like science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And to help you with this endeavor, you can count with the help of Kiwico. Kiwico is a monthly service that sends you very fun hands-on projects that teaches your tiny human very important concepts. Everything you need is already in the box, and each project is a great way to learn at home. In my case, my tiny human is my little sister. She likes K-pop and I like explosive engines, but we both like building stuff. If you have a tiny human, Kiwico's monthly projects are a great idea for a holiday gift. Use my link in the description down below, kiwico.com slash intexa50, to get 50% off. By clicking the link in the description down below, you are supporting my channel, supporting your tiny human, and most important of all, supporting the future. So don't forget to check out this opportunity. Back to the video. With the fuel ready, I designed a simple rocket that I 3D printed using the ceramic resin. This specific type of rocket engine only runs for about 5 seconds, which means I should have some results even if I don't post-process the parts in the kiln. But as you can imagine, the parts won't survive the test. I 3D printed a total of 3 rockets, which weighed about 20 grams each. I also 3D printed a support in blue PLA to hold the rockets while I pressed the propellant with a hammer and a dowel. As a dowel I used a piece of 20mm tube and some 3D printed insert. It's important to add small amounts of propellant at a time and press it as well as you can, because once I reached the desired height, I needed to use a 6mm drill bit to make a hole in the center of the rocket. If the propellant is not properly compressed, it will crumble and not hold itself in place. Professional rockets normally have nozzles. And even if this is not a professional rocket, and probably doesn't need a nozzle, well, I still want to implement one, because nozzles are pretty cool. The most commonly used nozzles are the Dulaval nozzle, which is a bell-shaped nozzle that constricts and expands the hot gases to accelerate them and align them in the correct direction. And the Aerospike nozzle, which is basically an inside-out Dulaval nozzle, and also pretty cool. I designed both nozzles to have the same level of constriction and 3D printed two aero spikes and one de Laval nozzle. After gluing the nozzles in place, I still needed a way to ignite the propellant and a simple solution to that problem is an electric match, which is just a match covered by a thin strand of copper wire that heats up once current flows through it. That heat ignites the match which in turn ignites the propellant. 
The final rocket weighed about 60 grams, which I don't think it's a lot. The three rockets were ready, and I was ready for the static test. So, buckle up. Three, two, one. Let us stop at this frame and admire how beautiful it is, how the gases are glowing and perfectly aligned with the axis of the nozzle. Everything is perfect and we should enjoy it, because life is about that, enjoying the present moment, because the next moment might not be so good. And in this case it's not, the rocket exploded. Look at my camera! Uh... Hello! Can you see me? <laughs> Let me clean this. Well, I guess the nozzle is too much constricted because it's generating too much pressure inside the chamber. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My problem now is that I still have two rockets with the same level of constriction that will probably blow up as well. So, what do you think? Should I launch the rockets? Like that smash button if you think I should launch the rockets. Well, it doesn't matter if you do it or not, because I'm still launching them. Okay, we are now outside, we're gonna test the Dillaval nozzle. Let's do this. Well, nobody saw that coming. Next. Went like there, like so far away, like 300 meters away? Yeah, 300 meters away! I am the rocket master, I am the rocket master, master of rockets. Cringe. Well, at least I got one of them to lift off. Yay! I still have a lot to learn when it comes to rockets, especially in terms of safety. Nonetheless, it was a really fun project that I really enjoyed. I am aware that not everyone watching my videos has a 3D printer at home to replicate this project. And for that reason, a few videos ago I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Arsenti, and he suggested that I could do something with solar panels. Like electrocuting tomatoes. Here you can see Arsenti with his new 3D printer. Oh, he spelled my name correctly. I moved. Because Christmas is just around the corner, in this video I'll be giving away not one, not two, but three 3D printers. To win one, you just have to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. This is where I would normally end the video, but a few videos ago I made a promise that if this channel got to 200,000 subs before the end of the year, I would shave my mustache. As of today, this channel has 210,000 subscribers. Which means... Sad. Very sad. I'll leave you guys with some depressing footage of me getting rid of my most prideful possession. As always, thank you for watching. And remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Non più vrai questi bei panachini.